Ladies and gentlemen, joining me today is the man who will be fighting at Brave CF 47 Asian Domination this Thursday, the 11th of March. This is none other. Once again, back to back, just like Grizzy Drake did it back to Meek Mill. It's Alumi Kareem on the podcast once again. Kratos, sir, couple months removed from our last conversation. First and most important question, Puri Janta Janna Chati hai. How are you feeling? Alhamdulillah. Puri Janta ki duayam are saath hai. You know, since the word got out, a lot of people have been praying, sending me messages, good vibes from, you know, all over the world. Uh, how can I not feel great, man? How can I not be, you know, not feel uh, healthy and great and amazing? Well, you're talking to us straight from the Fight Fortress HQ. I love the little background. I love the headquarters Represent. setup. Represent always. Uh, I have to say, Lumi, from the last fight to this one, uh, I'm sure there's a lot that has changed almost three years apart. But one thing which I want to start on do you feel differently going into this fight compared to the last fight, mainly because of the outcome of the last fight? Because like like everyone knows, you became a superstar for going in toe-to-toe with Jeremy Pakitu and putting on one of the best performances that we've seen in Brave CF by any Pakistani fighter. How different do you feel going into this one, my man? Uh, man, to be honest, it's uh, you know, I, I, as, I feel different as a person. Uh, I have grown a lot, um, like literally as well. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I've grown out of that, the kind of person that I was, you know, I am, I'm a very different person. Uh, I have, I, I'd say I've matured more, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, I have matured as a person, I've matured as a fighter. There's a lot of things that I realized, I learned. Uh, there's a lot of things I, you know, got to know about myself that night and after that fight. And uh, I am calmer than ever. You know, I, I used to be so hyped for, you know, for, for fight week and I would, a month out of the fight, you know, I'd, I'd see two, three weeks left or like four weeks out of the fight and I'd start getting those, those, you know, that adrenaline rush. And uh, this time that's not the case. You know, I'm, I, I'm cool and calm. Like, you know, when we started the, the camp, Coach Atasham said, you know, you have to be a cold blooded killer. That's how you got to feel. And I felt that. And, you know, that's, that's how I feel right now. And um, yes, Alhamdulillah, I have, you know, changed. I have evolved physically, mentally, um, technically, and there has been a lot of evolution and, uh, you know, all, all props to Team Fight Fortress and Team Fairtex. Definitely. The the holy synergy that has brought us the monstrosity that is Lumi Kareem, Kratos, Shaheen. My God. Uh, Fight Fortress and, you know, Team Fairtex. Those are two of, like, the world's most respected for, you know, their own reasons. Training facilities right now and one championship in Brave. People are yeah. starting to know about Fight Fortress. People <coughs> already know about Team Fairtex. We'll talk about that um, in just one second. But do you feel like the last fight... The fact that, you know, you got to headline the first time Brave CF was in Pakistan. That was a big, big spot for you. And now to come back in a, such a big, high-profile Pakistan versus India fight against a very game Mohammed Farhad. Clearly, Brave CF thinks very, very highly of you. Clearly, they know that you're money. Do you feel that pressure or are you thriving in that position right now? Man, uh, when Farhad first called me out, you know, I, I we accepted the fight, and I thought that was gonna happen soon. Um, you know, he repeat he he did that again. You know, MMA locker, I think locker room India, um, you know, and a lot of other uh, Indian MMA promotional social media uh, accounts. They, you know, those guys pushed it a lot. It never happened. Um, and you know, I I kind of I, I think. You know, I am, I'm a huge believer of everything happens for a reason. You know, everything takes its own sweet time. And the exact same happened. Maybe maybe I wasn't mentally prepared for that moment because you know, I hadn't matured enough. So uh, now that it has happened, I feel that, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to handle that, this pressure that well back then. But right now, there is no pressure on me. You know, I know, I know my worth, alhamdulillah. I know, you know, what I'm capable of. I know what I'm... Uh, you know what I can do. I know I, you know, bring eyes to the sport. I know people want to watch me fight, and uh, you know that's just that. And and I have accepted that. And you know, it's 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 uh, it's just it's just an overwhelming feeling for me that you know Brave is finally making it happen at the Combat Kingdom, and they're you know opening the opening card, the opening show is going to be that. And uh, so you know, 
it's I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to be back. And more than anything, I'm excited to get back and fight, man. I'm just excited to be in that cage again and fight. I know I told you this off camera, but I want to say in front of everybody, this is so exciting for me. This is the first time <laughs> since I started covering this sport that you, sir, are fighting. To most people in Pakistan, you really are the standard bearer when it comes to performances, thank you so much, grit. It, no, you don't need to thank me for anything, man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. And I'm so excited for this, honestly. Uh, but I have to say, we were talking about Team Fairtex and Team Fight Fortress. Uh, I saw you train at the Brave Gym just a couple of months back as well. Um, Omar Ahmed held pads for you and he literally said to me afterwards, he said, this guy feels like a heavyweight <laughs> you know what i mean and over <laughs> emma doesn't say that kind of stuff about a lot of people often so yeah. you know you've traveled and you've trained at different parts different points uh i'm sure you've taken different small lessons from each place uh but how is the synergy for stamp uh, of uh, pardon me team fair to x and team fight fortress how do you think people are going to see for the first time this new Alumi Karim who, you know, has trained both places, taken the best things of both? How do you think it's going to show differently in the cage? Um, you know, I've been I've been told by my coach DJ Jackson this as well that, you know, he said that you train with one of the best strikers at, at uh, in the world at Fairtex. Um, and, and I would like to add to that. Okay, we have, you know... One of the best, yes, strikers like Yotsen Klai is there, Stan Fairtex is there, Nat uh, Wonder Girl, she trains there, uh, Sam Apet, he is there. And then we have like Lumpini uh, level champions like Ferrari um, and, and, and um, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot my friend's name, Krob. So, so those guys, and then there are a lot of up and coming Muay Thai fighters. So I've been spotting with them, I've been training with them, and then Mark Abelardo. Uh, you know, so these guys, I've been training with them, and, and I saw that, you know, the kind of technical level that we have at Team Fight Fortress, uh, you know, the kind of the, the, the technical knowledge and striking that that uh, Coach Atasham and Coach Ali Sultan have uh, been teaching us, you know, we, we don't find it anywhere in the world. Like, I, I, I didn't find it as, I didn't find them as technical. Yes, they have the heart. They are like, they're the world champions. But then again, there are those things that are still missing and like, I, I see it that way. And, um, I mean, those guys are world-class athletes, man. I've trained with them. I've sparred with them. I've helped them train for their fights. Uh, you know, I've been there in their camps. And, uh, and, 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 and not only that, but, you know, Coach DJ Jackson himself at Fairtex, he's a, you know, he's a, he's a world champion in jiu-jitsu and he's a team lawyer in black belt and he is a Division One wrestler himself. So, you know, working with him on wrestling, on, like in jiu-jitsu and, uh, and then Muay Thai, uh, you know, coming back here, and, uh, you know, getting back to my roots, to my home, uh, Team Fight Fortress, and then training with that same mindset, you know, that, that now that everything was solidified, that, you know, I have built, you know, everything that I had already, I had built myself upon that. And when I grew even more here, you know, I got even more technical and I got, I, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like there's, there's more to learn, but I feel like I am getting completer and completer every single day. I'm growing every single day here at Team Fight Fortress. You know, this is the place that puts me through a lot of technical challenges, a lot of mental challenges. Uh, the coaches, both of them, you know, they, they make sure that I go through a lot of technical challenges and mental challenges. And, you know, that's how it's been uh, ever since we started. But now I, I have started seeing it now. And that part, I think, is the most exciting part because now I, I've realized how it works. So it is going to be exciting. It's going to be a very exciting fight and people are going to see, I, I reckon, a different kind of an Illumi. My God, I can't wait for this. Honestly, just hearing you talk about this, I can tell you're in a place where you're ready for war, essentially. And I want to oh, talk yes. to you about something that, you know, most people who listen to these kind of interviews would probably be waiting for me to ask this question. You know, it's a three year layoff. Do you have ring rust? Da, 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 da. But no, this is something that I feel like we can address. Uh, do you believe in ring rust? Is the three years something which you've been thinking about with regards to rest? Um, is it even a factor? Do you even care? To be honest, um, I do, I do believe in that. To be uh, and which is exactly why whenever I'm, I'm in Thailand, I make sure I, you know, make the most out of that time. I go fight Muay Thai fights, uh, and then when I'm in Pakistan, there's no MMA events here. I make sure that I compete in, you know, all the uh, Jiu Jitsu competitions. So uh, I've been, I've been, you know, uh, I have been competing uh, last year, uh, January, right before you know the lockdown happened. I, I was when I was in Thailand, I competed in Muay Thai, and I didn't know. For a, like for the, the that I was fighting for the belt and it was a five round fight, 
So, you know, out of the blue, I, I get a, you know, I, the, the boss of Fairtex, he, he walks on and like, you have a fight coming day after tomorrow. And I was like, all right, I'll fight. And he's like, okay, good luck. I was like, thank you, boss. And that was that, <laughs> that I, you know, we have a fight. And two Beautiful. days later, and, and, you know, two days later, he's like, okay, uh, you know, good luck for the fight today. And I go in, I fight. And, you know, I realized that you have to, like, you have to keep in shape. You have to keep in training. You have mm-hmm. to have that competition mindset going. After that, when I came back, um, when, when, you know, gyms started opening again and events started uh, happening, uh, Zia Mashwani had, you know, his fight mm-hmm. and his fight was announced in, you know, uh, September, for September. So we started his camp since September and we went on, you know, uh, training with Mashwani for his camp from September to November. And then he had another fight and then we, you know, had another camp. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> with Mashwani, I've been in two training camps. I've been in two fight training camps. And uh, uh, apart from that, you know, all these guys that are fighting in Flogger series and in, in Shaheen fight night and, you know, other events. So I've been training with them. I am like, so I've had almost three, four um, uh, training camps back to back. And mm-hmm. I have been sparring. I have been, you know, going at it. So at this point, I feel like you know, this is the right time for me to get in there and just put on a show. Man, I that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And, you know, it's in this post, almost post COVID world. I'm just glad like we're at at the pace where we were supposed to be exactly last year. I think, you know, guys are getting fights, events are rolling in, even locally, like you said. Like just this next month for me is a nightmare, man. Like there's KCFL, there's Park Fight yeah. Championship. We're cooking up some some that brave gym. Flogger series is happening. Shaheen fight night is there, and then abroad we have you fighting. Mahmoud just fought. Mustafa just fought. A, a boss is fighting next right after your card. We got a lot of stuff going on right now. You know what I mean? And this is. Amazing, like you said, the perfect time for something like this to come together. And I think this fight exactly. is really going to put like that, that you know, because you've, you've already had a Pakistan versus India fight at the World Series of Fighting. Um, and this is what I wanted to ask you next. Do you think about these fights, these subcontinental fights, I'll call them like differently? Or do you have the same kind of a mindset going into these fights? Um, to be honest, there's like it's for me it's, it's just another person you know just another body in front of me uh that i have to beat and move on and you know uh, get the get the victory like nate diaz say you know hit don't get hit and you know walk out with a pocket full of cash so you know it's, <laughs> this is that for me that you know i gotta i've got to go in there get the job done get my hand raised and uh, on to the next one but you know sometimes it does it, it, it used to bother me. Sometimes it, I used to feel like, you know, oh, what if people say that, oh, yeah, India Saharga, what if I lost? And what if this happens? What if that? Because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. You know, we think both ways. And uh, and after that, you know, I, I stopped telling myself because, you know, when, when so many people are praying for me and, and when I'm working super hard and, you know, when I have had such a long career and I have grown so much and I don't see myself losing at any point. Um, and, and, and for that matter, I know that, you know, because, because, you know, I, my last two fights were losses, but the kind of love that people showed me, you know, they were like, Oh, we know lose. We love you regardless of the loss. We love you. We love you. And that is what, you know, came to my mind that, you know what, I don't have to worry about all of that. You know, um, uh, I am, I'm a fighter. I go in there. I do my job. This is my job. So I do my job. Right. And, uh, and, and, and when I go do that with it with an easy mind, with a relaxed mind, I'm going to win for a fact. And uh, so, so that helped me, you know, that actually helped me calm, like get calmed down and, and, and just fix everything in my head. And, um, and in my last fight against Yad, mad props to Yad Singh, though he was a tough, tough, tough opponent. Hmm. Um, that guy, you know, was an Indian too. Right. So, yeah. and, 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 and I went in with a, with a flag of peace through sport. And at the end of that fight, we exchanged flags. Yeah. And I initiated it. So, you know, shout out to Diesel Diva for that. Uh, you know, she's, she's like my constant, she's been my constant support since day one. So, you know, I, I live that message, you know, peace through sports. And, and that is exactly what, what I do. That's exactly what I live for as well. And I've said this in a lot of places as well, that we're not politicians, we're athletes and athletes are supposed to be ambassadors of peace for their country. Uh, and, and what better way to show it against, you know, uh, um, against India. 
Yeah, and you know, if you if if somebody watching does want India to lose or you know has some kind of a political you know problem with the Indian nation and you know is rooting for you just because the Indian guy should lose, don't worry. This is a fight. You know what I mean? You're gonna see someone get beat up essentially, so you don't have to worry about the political stuff. And I completely agree. That's a beautiful message. And you know, like I'm glad you have the same mindset going into this fight. Sure. I don't want to take up too much of your time, Alumi. You know what I mean? I know you're right right in the middle of everything right now. First <laughs> of all, I want to say thank you so much for taking out the time for doing this. I just want to, you know, any shout outs, anyone you, anything you want to talk about, the floor is completely yours. Uh, but before, before I give the floor over to you, I just want to talk to you, the person watching. Uh, we will be putting this up and obviously putting up a lot of other content related to Lumi's fight and every other Pakistani fighter who's fighting internationally and we try to cover all the local uh, MMA scene and football scene happening locally as well I said locally twice my point is give us a follow subscribe to us all of that jazz please it really helps and now enough of me enough of that Kratos please take it away the floor is yours man uh, as simple as that you know that like you said in the beginning, I just wanted to add to that that you know one guy's got to win, one guy's got to lose. You know, it's 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 a, it's a sport. It's it it's it's a one way street. Either you win or you lose. You know, um, you can't you can't get both results at the same time. Uh, so you know that that is that is that is that mentality that I'm going in with. I'm going into fight. I'm going in because I I love to perform for the people. You know, and I have I have been a performer. Uh, ever since and and you know i love to perform for the people and that's exactly what i'm going to do inshallah march 11th we're going to have fireworks um and uh you know I'm, I'll, I'll have my hand raised this time and uh yeah that's it man uh, i'm so excited now uh, now i'm excited <laughs> let's go let's go this is really really exciting stuff for those of you who missed it at the start or in case you need reminding brave cf 47 emanates live this thursday 11th march check www that's www.bravecftv.com check your local listing see what time Lumi's fight is coming in let's Pour in the fucking numbers and go in at 100, 200, 300, 1,000, 10,000 Pakistani fans watching this fight. So Brave knows that we are, you know, like watching. And that really helps. I don't want to explain in this video why, but you know what I'm talking about. Let's pump in those numbers. Thank you so much, Kratos. This has been an absolute, absolute pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so much for talking to me. And guys, hit that like, subscribe, share button. And, you know, these guys are doing the real deal. I love guys. you, man. I love you. Thank you. Stay tuned. Thank you so much, uh, Kratos. We're out.